It's a really nice jacket and you can only get it on eBay. Hello and welcome to New Center 5. My name is Dave and we'll be checking in with Dave on the ground who's testing a leather jacket. Dave, how is it? It's working wheel well, round, Dave! Okay, uh, I try to post videos every Friday at 10 a.m. And since I said that, it's just been impossible to post videos on Fridays at 10 a.m. So, I'm so sorry. I had a very crazy week. I went to California, San Diego, didn't sleep for like 48 hours straight, met and befriended a special operations forces member. Now we're buddies, he gave me this knife! And it's incredible, I love it so much. Among other things too, but I can't show them in the video because they're top secret. But yeah, I had a ton of fun, made really, really good friends, but the whole time I was just like, what about Friday's video? Today, I wanna to talk about the best leather jacket I think ever. And what I mean by that is a jacket I really like. It's not the best leather jacket ever because there's a lot of other leather jackets that are also the best leather jackets ever. So, you know, it's kind of a toss up, but this jacket, blew my mind. One, when I saw it, well, actually, tell, to tell you the truth, this L.L. Bean jacket, I've seen on eBay for a really long time. And I was always just like, no, oh, it looks cool, but it's L.L. Bean. But because I thought it had all the ingredients that I wanted in a leather jacket, but I thought L.L. Bean, it's probably not that good at quality, you know, this or that. And then someone posted one on eBay, the one that I, is actually in this video, and they took a picture of the tag, and I read the tag, and what got me was when it said 100% wool pile lining. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. I thought it was just Sherpa, but it's 100% wool pile. So I don't know, that's more expensive. Maybe they didn't cut costs. I got this jacket and I was like, I can't believe the L.L. Bean tag is on this jacket because this jacket is insane. Yeah, L.L. Bean used to be just cranking out quality. Now they, they make stuff that's okay. L.L. Bean makes good stuff and they have enough physical locations in New England at least that I will go there before I buy something online just because the physical location is closer. But real quick, if you like this video and you're like, maybe I should subscribe or follow him on Instagram or comment on this or like that, I think that's the best decision you've ever made. We're gonna have oodles of fun. Old L.L. Bean, apparently insane. So obviously, real quick, this jacket was made in the USA. Later versions, I think, were outsourced. I forget to wear. But really cool thing is this tag says exactly when it was made. So November 24th, 1997. I was two, and Taylor was almost three. But real quick, looking at this jacket, obviously it's 24 years old. I don't think it was really worn at all. I think someone bought it and then sold it later, never touched it. And maybe, and if it was, then this is incredible, but just judging by the quality, there's very little wear. You'll see there's some of like the top coat of the leather that's off and you'll see that leather color under it. I think that just shows it's worn, been worn very, very sparingly, but I guess we'll have to see how it ages. Maybe it just truly is a tank of a jacket. Oh yeah, also I never said why we're in my car. We're in my car, not because my apartment wasn't available or anything, just sometimes I feel like videos in my car are a lot more intimate than videos in my apartment, just because it's like really closed in and I felt like I needed some intimacy. Okay, so real quick, if you were around and you wanted to buy a leather jacket and you walked into L.L. Bean in 1997 or the 80s or anything, you would see the L.L. Bean Flying Tiger Edition jacket. Now there's three versions of this jacket. There is the OG, looks kind of like an A2 Flying Tiger leather jacket, which is non-distressed goatskin. I don't have a really solid picture of it, but this is what the ad looked like. So it was smooth, not worn or anything like that. Then there was basically the distressed OG version, which was the same leather, but processed uh, probably chemically. I don't really know how just to, to be more distressed, softer, have more character and all that straight off the box, which then there was this version, which if there wasn't this version, I would pay no mind to these jackets. And to be honest, without the lining, I still wouldn't really pay any mind to these jackets because the lining and the collar are what make this jacket go from zero to hero. So let's get into this beast a little bit. Ella Bean says, um, it's 100% shearling wool, just 100% wool pile, which wool pile is a lot warmer than most wool, like woven blankets or linings or anything like that, just because it has a lot more loft. You can see how crazy, we'll get into it in a second. This is the best part of the jacket. I don't want to spoil it right away, but. And there's a 100 gram thin slate in the sleeves. Thin slate, I just kind of look at thin slate as like, oh, that's okay. It gets crushed, it gets smushed, it gets less effective 
comfortable over time. But in the jacket, it's still pretty effective now. My arms have never been cold or anything like that. But usually I'm layering under it anyway. LL Bean says this is comfortable to five degrees Fahrenheit, and that's a lie. I don't, that's, five degrees is cold. I, maybe they're saying if you layer a lot with it, five degrees, but the, the person that's comfortable in just this and five degrees probably wears a t-shirt at six degrees. Not that this jacket isn't super warm, but five degrees is cold. I would say I've worn this jacket down to eight degrees with a pretty thick wool sweater under it, and I was totally fine. So if you layer properly, five degrees, sure, but I don't know. So at the time, 1997, this jacket sold for $335, which with inflation now is $540.20. I think that would totally be a fair price for this jacket, but honestly, if I went to the store and I went to L.L. Bean and I saw this jacket and it was going for $800, I don't think I would react that poorly. I think I'd be like, all right, that seems about right with the lining, the leather quality, the collar and everything like that. It's a really nice jacket and you can only get it on eBay. I'm usually a size 38. I'm 5'9", 151.9 pounds. Last time I checked, I gained a pound, almost two pounds. That's all right, I'll work it all off. Don't worry. I got a size small. I think it fits me all right. I think a medium also may fit me a little bit better. Oh no, am I... Oh sh... Uh oh, my... May have just killed the battery to my car. I didn't. Oh, thank God, that was horrifying. Okay, we're back. We're back in business, baby. That was one of the scariest things I've ever happened in my life. I think a medium may fit me better. There may be a little bit more room in the shoulders, but the way it's cut, it's a short jacket anyway, so I don't really think it would have been that crazy. And I can layer under it super comfortably. I can layer a really thick sweater and stuff like that. Okay, we'll go from the outside and we'll go in. The outside of this is goat skin, which is pretty accurate to World War II jackets because when the US government was giving out A2 jackets, they started in horsehide and then as the war moved on, and they kind of didn't have enough horse hide to keep making these jackets, they moved to goat skin. So goat skin is really cool for a few reasons. One, it's really soft out the gate, so this jacket is distressed. But two, goat skin, much like sheepskin, has lanolin in it, so that gives it more water resistant properties, which is really good for a winter jacket because it snows outside when it's cold, and that's great. I wouldn't, I just, no matter how waterproof leather is, unless it's like my Blundstones or my boots, I hate getting leather wet. I just can't stand it. That's why denim, I think, is my favorite material, just because I don't care what happens to denim. I don't care if it gets soaking wet or anything, but leather, I'm like, oh my God, so something's wrong! But anyways, yeah, goat skin is a lot more flexible than cowhide, for example, and it feels like sheepskin, and it's as soft as sheepskin, but it's a lot tougher. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Not as tough as cowhide, not as fragile as sheepskin in the middle, really nice, really soft, has this really cool pebbly texture to it, so, I like that. The first thing I usually look for in a leather jacket or a quality leather jacket too is the zipper because if the zipper's not good, the jacket's not gonna be good. That, to me, it's like the first sign of quality is a thick, hefty zipper, which this jacket has made out of brass. It's super thick, super hardy, zips fine. It's a pleasure to zip in class. This jacket does not have booby pockets, as you will see, but it does have pelvis pockets. Pelvis pockets, but not your pelvis. Your, what the heck is down here? Your, it has love handle pockets. It has an interior pocket where you can slip things like your wallet or knives, and that's pretty much it in terms of the leather and stuff like that. But, like I said, what makes this jacket so incredible is the wool lining and the collar, because that, to me, is the hardest thing to find in any jacket. I say this in so many videos, but finding a really good lining in a winter jacket is really hard because nothing is ever thick enough to have a true winter jacket. Everything with a lining, like, like a Sherpa lining, like a wool lining or anything like that, usually is good for fall and that's about it. Then you want down or you want a layer. This jacket finally is a jacket that can handle anything in the winter. Obviously you have to layer when it gets below like eight, but still. That's pretty amazing. When I went to go get this package from the mail room in my apartment, I just, there's this little cage you have to go into because our mail keeps getting stolen. So you like go in the cage, you close the door behind you, and no one was there. So I was like, I'm just gonna open the jacket right now. And when I opened it up, uh, it, for one, it looked tiny. I don't know why when I first opened it up, it looked like this big and I was like, oh my God. But then I unzipped the jacket and I looked on the inside and I was just like, Wow, I was like borderline squealing in a small cage. Like I looked like a rat that found cheese under a wood chip for a second. I was losing my mind. So first off, if we're looking at the body lining, wool pile, like I said, wool pile is basically just wool that's sheared, I think. I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how wool pile works. It could also be like Sherpa where there's a grid under it and they kind of put tufts 
under it like that. I, I don't know, I couldn't really find a lot of information on it, but it's incredibly warm. And like I said, on this one, it's super thick, water resistant. If you get wet, the jacket's still gonna be warm because wool retains its insulation properties. On the sleeves, Thinsulate, like I said, I originally thought the jacket was a Thinsulate layer in the body and then a wool pile lining over that, which real quick reminds me, the ribbing on the end of the sleeves and the bottom of the jacket is not 100% wool ribbing, which is the classic like 100% wool ribbed jacket or whatever like that. I said this before, but there are some aspects of jackets or outerwear or anything where modern materials make it stronger and they make it last longer. And I'm fine with that. A lot of people in this space, they don't like polyester mixes in their wool and stuff like that. As long as it's not like 85% polyester, 15% wool, usually a wool rich blend, which is 50-50, I'm fine with just because getting the properties of the polyester or nylon or whatever spandex or whatever it may be, usually add a lot more benefits to whatever they're being used in than detractors. Then on the collar, we have a Mouton collar, which Mouton, I did a little research on, which is wool that has been chemically straightened and modified so it doesn't look like wool and then it's usually dyed a color of a beaver. Supposed to look and emulate beaver fur, which, okay, fine. If that's how you wanna do it, go for it. So, so that is wool, chemically treated to be straight and relaxed and soft and it feels, it doesn't feel like scratchy wool, it feels like kinda like an oily, sheeny fur if that makes sense. That is on the collar and it's super thick and it's incredible. Anyways though, that's about it. I got off the plane today and when I went back to my apartment, I was trying to shower and as I was showering, I kept falling a little bit like to the right and hitting the wall and waking myself up and I was just like, this is probably the most pathetic I've ever looked. But things are good now.